you know. Welcome to Smash Writing. I am your host, Paul. This is Justin, the other host. And today, we are talking about our favorite horror movies of the 70s. And beyond. And beyond. We covered we, almost every decade. We could have made it just straight 70s. But at this point, like, you know, after the 70s, you're really kind of not so much scratching the barrel, but you're scratching the barrel. Definitely when it comes to, like, the ones you enjoyed. Uh, I am a, you know, I, Halloween's coming up, so we'll be touching more horror in October. So, you know, this will be a good little break. Um, but let's cut to it. These are our favorite horror films of 70s and beyond. Justin, you're up. Kicking us off with... Jaws. Yes. 1975. It really kicks Disagree that it's that high when you're, you put it, you know, it definitely deserves more respect, but. Oh, shut the hell up. You, hey, you've got Jaws 2. <laughs> hey, Jaws 3 in Revenge but is the. Jaws is a movie that really kicked, not only just like, like came iconic horror, but it started the, the summer blockbuster, for better or worse. It was Jaws that kick started this genre. But the idea of like this big great white shark in an area that it's not supposed to be in, picking off swimmers and boat on boats, and this uh, small town chief trying to save his town and get everything back to normal while the mayor's like, absolutely not. It's fine. Don't worry about <laughs> it. You got some iconic characters and you got some iconic moments and scenes ripped straight out of this movie. Yeah. And hard to, it, it's definitely in it's a st uh, Steven Spielberg. Show me the way to go home. Boom, 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 tired and I want to go. It's definitely and it's a Steven uh, Spielberg uh, film. Uh, another film I can handle the test of time. It came out in '75. Um, my number ten, uh, Halloween, 1978. Well, that. Mirrors my number nine, so... Right, so we'll, we'll get into a little... Uh, we'll talk about it, William Bush Wing, the two of us. We all know the sequels butcher things, made things better, took some things away, timelines are all mixed up. But when you go back to the first film, Halloween... That's a bit overrated. It's, it's overrated. Maybe a smidge overrated, but nevertheless, it wasn't a bad movie. No, it was a good movie for like a low budget horror film that did not have Simple. a budget. Simple to the point. You had this stalker following the woman that got clued too close to the house. And honestly, you know, all these other sequels made them brother and sister, then didn't make them brother and sister, whatever. Well, we're not it, talking about it. Just focus on the movie. It was Stop simple. talking about the time. It was line. simple. You didn't need anything to it. Simple plot, simple story, good to go. It showed what you can do off of loose budget and created an iconic character. Yeah. Uh, Other people will have done better, but Halloween left a mark. My, and, and it's that simple. I, I liked it. You know, didn't get into no storylines, nothing. Boom, to the point. Uh, my number nine is actually the 1932 The Mummy. Because there, there was a remake in the 50s uh, that kind of played off the series. And of course, there was the Brendan Fraser one, which got high praise. Uh, this one, you know, I got the box set, and I, I love black and white movies. It being a horror film, it... Someone has to love them. I mean, they're there. <laughs> they're part of the history. You can't ignore it. Um, it wasn't a, the longest film. It, 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 Not a lot of them were back then. No, this was like, I think, maybe 70 minutes, so just an hour and 10 minutes. So they, they skipped through a lot. There wasn't real much story to it. Um, yeah, but it, it did, for its time frame, in 1932, which horror was still just growing into a full length. It's been around since the 1890s, but the 1920s really brought in the full length, which I guess is an hour plus. Yeah, I mean, back then it was. So this really was the, you know, start of iconic horror film. So, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Even for a 1932 film, when you can watch it and not get tired of it and not get bored of it, it did things right for me to keep me engaged in watching it. So, The Mummy, 1932, my number nine. My number eight is 
1963, The Birds. It's a movie I wasn't sure about going into it, but fell in love with it right away. Tippi Hedren's killed it in this movie. In some real sh terrible working conditions, mind you, with like real birds being chucked at her. Think of what that's. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I love the idea that there was never a reason given that these birds are just attacking people. And they left you on that note where they made it out of the house. But how far is this going? Is this worldwide? Is it just happening in this little cove? You left it up in the air and it left you with questions in a perfect way. Like the bird attacks were really cool looking. I think the big pink scenes of like all these birds just swarming around the cove was beautiful sets and a beautiful sight to see. It is a really fun movie to watch. Uh, my number seven is the Rocky Horror Picture. I've I, never watched it. <laughs> I never, like, it became a good cult following film. A lot of kids, that, like, I remember a lot of kids in my high school, the, the goth kids were into it. And I still never, like, really watched it up until, like, maybe, like, five years ago I watched it. And it's trippy. Uh, it, it, horror comedy is not my favorite horror type because I don't think comedy and horror should be together. Comedy and horror should always be together. But there have been films in recent memories that have said, mm, give it a second chance. This film would almost be like the first one in that genre. I would love to find out if that's true or not. But it feels like... What year did it come out? Uh, it came out in 75. Maybe. Yeah. So if, it, if that is indeed the first one, it, it really kicked off the genre in the right way. Tim Curry is a, you know... Oh, Curry kills it. Yeah, Curry's wonderful and everything. He, his acting of Chops is everything. Yeah, like just did everything he's in, he kills it. He's mostly remembered for that film. So, yeah, I, I really can't complain about it. Um, in an in an era where possessed and and all this demon stuff was really coming to arise, this one kind of stands out because it's not part of that. Um, but that is my number seven. My number seven. Is Dawn of the Dead from this 1963. came close to being on my list. I, this would be an honorable mention for me. Yeah, I've seen some of the ones on your list. And it's, it's wrong <laughs> with you. Anyway, Dawn of the Dead took everything Night of the Living Dead did and made it better. They Same had brought in Savini, they had him gore, and the bloody uh, mass attacks. And I love the setting of them all. Just, I always love them all backdrops. And settings with them trapped in the mall, trying to like that'd be the perfect place to hide in the apocalypse, wouldn't it? Just the mall. You get everything you need. You got food, and you got plenty of places to cook, and you got plenty of space clothes and space to move around, beds, and I just love the idea of the, the horror movie settings in malls. That's why it's here. <laughs> um, my number six is uh. I believe it, it was 1977, The Car. Uh, I actually did reviews on The Car in the uh, 2019 sequel to Car's Revenge, which was just weird in some ways. <laughs> but uh, The Car itself was a car that was possessed and just killing people in, the, uh, in, in a small little town. And it's up to the sheriff, James Brolin, which who kind of owned the 70s uh, with a couple of big hits as a lead character. Because, um, you know, he'll be... Uh... Oh my god, I just realized, I missed my number eight. Good job, we'll go back to it after this. Yeah, because uh, uh, it follows the conversation. The car is number six. Um, it just kind of creepy with... The windows tinted. People are trying to figure out who's driving this car. Why is the driver? And then you find out all along it's not the driver. And as much as they try to blow this car up, and it, it's like, kind of like a Christine before Christine. Um, but they're starring James Brolin uh, as the sheriff, which seemed like kind of like a jackass, but he was a good guy at the same time. Um, my number Can eight. Go back to eight. Yeah, my number eight is. I actually got into this way after the fact. The HBO series Westworld got me into it. And then I had to go back and watch this film. So basically, Westworld is about a 
near future park where they make androids of real human uh, that portray almost as real humans. You go to this park as a fantasy getaway. You can do whatever you want to these androids, fuck them, friend them, go on adventures with them, anything you really want to do. But then they start, because they're AI and uh, artificial intelligence, they begin to grow as, like, they have to get revenge. And they start messing up the stories, they throw everything in haywire, and they're androids, and you can't tell if they're real or they're not. Uh, this was another film that was James Brolin that was leading the cast. And it came out in 73, and like I said the HBO series kind of brought it back to uh, the, the spotlight, but I give it credit as my number eight. So, your number six. six. My number six is The Omen from 1976. I think, uh, for my money, it's one of the best, one of these devil, demon style and this is movies. this is an honorable mention for me, too. So I again just looking ahead at your list like yeah idiot. But because uh, we have different styles, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and you're playing with the crayons that you're eating at the same time. <laughs> uh, the Omen. It's my favorite one of the Devil Demon slash movies. Having the old with this little boy, you're not sure if he really is the Antichrist or not because they leave that kind of open to like is all this series of events coincidences or is. He causing it is there a higher power going on in the world, and we like, it teases you all throughout with the multiple like there's a animal inside this coffin where that the mother should have been or the father should have been or no where his son should have been, and then right at the end where this guy the dad can't take it anymore and he's gonna kill him and the cops bust in and they leave you wondering for a moment who died and whatnot and. That last shot of uh, Damien turning and smiling at the camera was perfect. <laughs> Great way to end it. I have not watched any of the sequels because, honestly, mm -hmm. I don't think they could have done them better. And I'm very wary on watching them. Guess what film series we're going to shoot through in the next couple of no, months? No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> my, my number two... Um, and oh, and, uh, The Omen. Uh, the Jeffs were amazing. The plane of glass coming down just at the right time to time it out perfectly so people who go like this when they pull their eyes back would see it. That was a good touch. Great touch. <laughs> my, my number five, and he's going to give me some slack. I think for a sequel of the series, it was a, not probably the greatest, but I'm talking about Jaws 2. Um, the continued story on bringing back most of the cast to continue fighting this concept of this shark that should not be anywhere near this little town. It, it was a good follow-up story. Um, it, I'm not saying it was there, it was, it was average. I thought it was a good film. It always had potential to be better. Now, we know what the series became after this one, and I do think the 3 and 4 gave 2 a bad name when it comes to the sequels, but you go back and watch 2, it was actually not a bad film. I don't even remember 2. People want to forget about it because 3 and 4 were just that bad. Um, but that is my number 2. Uh, my number 5, yeah. Um, <laughs> count today. Yeah, count I know. Today. My count is so off today. 1, 2, <laughs> 3. But that that's my number 5. That's uh, Jaws. Two, which came out in um, '78, so about so three years after the first film. All right, my number five is my turn. I didn't want to load this down with too many monster mashup. You know the monster mashup. That's your up. expertise. That's my expertise. So you had to. I didn't These are your favorite. It's not. Nah, I didn't want to load it down with like I could have. I could just like top five, six, seven could have been all monster mashup, but uh, I went with one. One of it at number five, as a creature of the Black Lagoon, based solely off Gilman. I love that monster. That creature is just so badass looking. I so want them to do the remake, but just having the original, that'll do for now. <laughs> remake it seriously. Come on, it's been seventy years. And there's not any other. In none of them, none of one's talking about remaking this one. It's like in this do Invisible Man. Like Hollow Man wasn't a thing in '99. Give me the lagoon. Come on. <laughs> my long enough. 
My number four is Jaws, which was uh, Justin's number ten. Um, pretty much everything Justin <coughs> says, uh, I agree with the film. Uh, the shark shouldn't have been there. The the acting. The, the little town. The little fighting. town concept that the mayor who doesn't want to keep want to keep the peace and you know kind of like. So they um, beat that trope into the ground pretty quickly after this, didn't they? Yes, yes, they did. Um, it did everything right that for that film, the, the shark. You know, there's always a good film that has animals that you put fears into you about that animal. And I think Jaws, Jaws, did it. Jaws, Jaws definitely did it for <laughs> Jaws me. really put the Because meanwhile, like, all the people. other research says sharks do not eat humans. They... But, they mistake you for something else. Yeah, but in here, there's like, no, that shark knows what he was doing. Um, but Jaws... I uh, hungry for that long pig. Yeah. <laughs> Jaws is my number four. And we're going over to my number four. It's 1978. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Maybe this is probably... It's close to the top of this little franchise list. This is uh, the first one. It was not like anything people had seen at the time. It was just gory. It was Gate gross. It was dark and name. gritty. Yeah. Like, you think of... When you think of Texas, even to this day, because, yeah, it has been rainbow. You get that bowl time. of chili? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, damn well, if anybody drives through Texas right now, they're going, where that chili? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, the, the family was just horrifying. Like, you never, it was just in your face, dark, gritty, over the top. Leatherface and all of the right ways. Icon. Leatherface is iconic look. Like, like, you could see that door swing open, he grabs him and pulls him in, and it happened all so fast and quick. And once again, I have no problem. You never rooted against a man in a wheelchair more. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the remake wasn't bad in that sense, uh, with the wheelchair and <laughs> I think the I think the remake's better. We both agree on that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't let the camera know. <laughs> I don't think the mic picked us up that good. Uh, uh, we should have pulled out the speaker. I don't think the camera can hear me anyway. <laughs> no, it actually does. And, um, my number three, once again, is another James Berlin-led film, The Amityville Horror, which came out in 1979. Uh, haunted house movies, everything, this did everything right for me and it handled the test of time. Uh, Until the sequel came out and blew it out of the water, but yeah, hey, that happens. Sequels sometimes can be good and bad things. This film didn't need a sequel, though there was another... Uh, Not a sequel to remake, I mean. Okay. Um, My bad! <laughs> the sequel actually, there was another story to tell, but it didn't need to be... It could have been the prequel rather than the sequel because the story takes place before one. But this is back then. When Actually, I no, I jumped ahead on your list. You're talking about Amityville Horror? Yeah, yeah, number three. They're all bad. All bad. Even the first... 1979. Did, did, I, did I stutter? Oh, my. All terrible. <clears throat> terrible movies. There's a fan base, obviously, that disagrees. There's always a fan base. You're wrong. I got you. You and your fan base are wrong. You. But I mean, looking at you, fan base, these are bad movies. I still enjoyed it. It definitely was is definitely one of my favorite haunted house movies. Um, that's my number three. Your number three. Mine. You played a good game, boy. <laughs> the game's over. It's time to die. Yeah, Phantasm is. A, I waited way too long to watch Phantasm because I just watched it about two years ago. For the first time. Like, yeah, first time. I waited way too long. They're fantastic. Angus Scrim is amazing as the tall man. And he did a wonderful job making him look taller by getting him into the little suits. <laughs> yes. The spheres just flying around and drilling in the people's head. Blood squirting out. That's great stuff. You know, I... No, of course, like, boy. <laughs> It took me forever to watch the first one, too. I watched the second one first when I, I was a kid, and I was creepy. Uh, I I would say, actually, I, I waited until about a year ago to watch the first one. 
So I was like, what? Oh, good lord, what tells you so long? Shut up, you waited long too. Yeah, but I, I, when I watched the first one, I watched all of them together. I gotta finish the series. Good lord, you haven't even finished the series yet. Uh, my, my number two is House on Haunted Hill, the 1959 starring um, Vincent Price. Um, there are some actors that... Vincent Price is the man. <laughs> yeah, there are some actors that are associated with horror that, you know, Scream Kings, Scream uh, Queens, you know, who are just, you know, I just talked about James Brolin being in a lot of some horror films of the 70s. I don't think there is anyone that can sell a horror film than the late uh, Vincent Price. Yeah, he was great. That's fun. Um, the way he prints, presents his character, everything like that. Uh, he sold the movie. Uh, I enjoyed the, the black and white film, but you know, classic uh, black and white films can be a good thing, and this was definitely a good thing. Um, the, the remake was actually pretty good too. Uh, came out in '99. Which I did not know, so once again I watched the remake remake first, and it brought me to the attention of the 1959 film. So I got got a hold of the 15 the 1959 film, and the rest is history. I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was a bad film. Um, Vincent Price. I don't think there's a bad horror film that he is in. That is my number two. My number two is in space. No one can hear you scream. I believe it's the tagline. Alien. 1979. And what can you say? It's one of the perfect horror movies of all time. It gave us a fantastic monster in the uh, Xenomorph. It was like some great scenes with him, like of the guy in the vent, and he looks up to say something, and then he turns around for a moment, and the alien just bah! grabs <laughs> him and pulls him in, and it's then it gives us one of the greatest heroines in any genre, in Ripley, Sigourney Weaver killed it, became an icon overnight with this character. This thrilling story of like the face, the face hugger grabbing hold and not knowing what it's doing, and even when he's better, you're like, what's going, what's going to happen to him? Because you know it can't be it, but you weren't ready for the chest burster alien to come busting out of his chest during dinner. Just iconic moments, iconic characters, iconic horror movie. Aliens, top notch. <clears throat> My number one is a bad movie. A bad movie. Nineteen seventy-three. Hell. <laughs> Nineteen seventy-three. The Exorcist. Boo! Boo this movie and boo its fans. <laughs> I'm kidding. Like what you want. This is bad. No. <laughs> no. I. I. This film was one of the early days of me watching horror films as a, of a kid. I grew up. Thing this this movie was the the creepiest film. Uh, it starred um, Max von Voren, Linda Blair, and the forgotten one, Jason Miller, the late Jason Miller. Um, it, it gave me nightmares. Uh, I how how the the being the possessed. Devil made me do it. No, get stop with the Eleanor Lorraine uh, <laughs> thing. No, that's not where that came from. <laughs> I'll show you off screen where that comes from. Um, I don't know. I found like it. You know, this was obviously one of the f the first film was revol revolving around what I was doing. It, I thought it did everything it could do to make the story right, and it did. Uh, as bad I'll test of time. I'll be honest I, with you. There is a remake uh, being planned. I'm not interested. I think this is one of those films that needs to be left alone. Well, it, it can only go up from where it's at. The remake will probably so be so boring. The so boring. I was so did I watched it when I was like ten. This movie was hyped to hell. It was like one of the scariest movies of all time. And God was I so bored. So bored. This is why there's two of us here at Smash Ryan, because one has to be right and one has to be yeah, wrong. Yeah, you put Amityville on your list but left off Alien. <laughs> Well, that's why there's you, so you can put <laughs> Alien. Now let's go with your number one. My number one is Invasion of the Body Snatchers from 1979. Which you did a... Just, I did a massive review on all of the Invasion movies. About... No, it was last year. Because during lockdown I did the review. It was just... Invasion of the Body Snatchers is just chef's kiss perfection. 
done right. Donald Sutherland leads charge in this movie of uh, an alien invasion happening from outer space with the pods creating duplicates of people and killing off the human that they duplicate. And they did a, they took a remake and they made it better. They improved on it in every aspect in what you should do with a remake. They did it here perfectly to the letter. And having it end on a sour note, a bad note, where the aliens kind of win, where uh, you think, like, she finds the woman who uh, separates from the pack is, like, blending in, and then she sees Sutherland's character. She's like, finally someone I know, and she goes to run over at him, and then, oh, he's been duplicated. And she's outed herself to the pack, and it's just perfect touch, perfect ending. Sometimes a bad ending is the right way to go, and they did it perfect here. That is our 70s and beyond horror films. Um, we are looking forward to October because you know that's horror fest for us. It's Mash Friday. So, <laughs> until next time, guys. <laughs>